Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I wanted to introduce the idea of statistical inference as a way to understand the sample regression function. Statistical inference is really at the core, at the heart of econometrics. It gives us the ability to draw or take a sample and based on that sample to make an inference, to draw an inference about a larger population that we don't have access to. Statistics is a powerful tool for making statements about the population based on some sample. So to illustrate, here's a data set from Guarte's Essentials of Econometrics. And we want to imagine that this entire grid represents the population. That's why I have the big, large green circle. So this is the large data set, the population that we're not going to have time to go and collect. And what it is is it's four levels of disposable income. So here's $150 per week in disposable income. There are 10 customers at our store who spend these amounts on the lotto. So here's somebody with $150 in disposable income who spends $28 per week. And here's someone who spends $27 per week. And then we can go up to $175 per week in disposable income and then we have a different set of customers. And so we've got an entire population here of data and if we were to plot it on a scatter gram or a scatter diagram it would confirm our intuition that there's a linear relationship between weekly disposable income, that's the x-axis and we're going to call that the independent variable and the amount spent on the lotto, that's the y-axis, we're going to call that the dependent variable. Here's the whole population. Remember I said we're not going to have time to collect or we're not going to have time or resources to go and collect all of these data points. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a sample out of the population and so here's our sample. And An analogy would be the census. For In the United States every 10 years we don't go out and count everybody in the country we, draw, we take a smaller sample and based on that sample we make inferences about the population. So in this case we got a small sample and here the green dots are the observations and then using that ordinary least squared technique OLS we can draw a line through the sample observations and this is the sample regression line it is characterized by a sample regression function. But it was only one sample. What if I went back to the population and drew another sample? Probably I would get a different result. Now in blue, see how we'd get different data points from the population? That different sample, we could then analyze it and produce an ordinary least squared regression line, now represented in blue which is also a sample regression function. And so what I wanted to show you here is we have the same population, but we don't have direct access to it. So we're going to draw samples, but each time we draw a sample, we're probably going to get a different result, maybe just a slightly different result. Maybe in some ways on average they will converge, but each of the sample regression functions is different. And each of those sample regression lines will be characterized by here in the on the in the set of the green data points, a sample regression function with its own parameters, and a separate sample regression function with its own parameters. And so the overall population is sort of a an ideal, a sort of platonic ideal that we don't have access to and it's fairly stable. It has parameters but we don't get at it directly. We take samples and those samples have estimators. Those samples are statistics that are estimators of the population parameters. So for, if, for the sample we call them statistics, for the population we call them parameters, and here's one sample, here's another, and so on. And so finally we can understand the different notation that's introduced that are all about regression functions. In this case these are all two variable or simple regression functions. That's the RF. But first of all in regard to the larger population in dark green 
we have a stochastic population regression function. And as I've said, we never get to really confirm it in most cases. And it's got parameters, and then also it has a stochastic or error term because even if we've got a good equation here, reality is not going to necessarily conform to our straight line. So we have a stochastic or random error term. Now that's the part we're trying to figure out. We don't get direct access to it. Instead, we take samples. For each sample, we produce a sample regression function. And now we have statistics, and these are estimators. In this case, the intercept. It is an estimator of the population parameter. Here's the slope. It's a partial, it's a regression coefficient. It's an estimator of the population slope parameter. So see how we've got small b for the estimator and a large b for the population parameter. But also, you'll recall, the observations don't fall directly on the line, so it's important to add this e which we now call a residual. So it's a little bit of a subtlety, but the stochastic or random error term corresponds to the residual. And it's a residual because if you think about those, those graphs, we can actually observe the difference between an actual y and a y that's predicted by the line. So this is a residual. But still in this case, we now have what we really work with, which is the stochastic sample regression function, where we predict where we predict a y, and then we observe that y is actually a function of our estimators, an intercept and a slope, plus some residual that we do expect. And so that's the key difference between the sample regression function, which we use to make inferences to draw inferences about the population regression function. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thank you for your time.